Welcome to our lecture online. Now let's take a closer look to the meaning of a state of a system. Remember, to define the state of a system, we need to have three state variables, the pressure, the volume, and the temperature of the system. And any system is uniquely defined by those three state variables. So if the pressure changes, you're now in a different state. If the volume changes, you're now in a different state. If the temperature changes, you're now in a different state. So each state is defined by three specific variables and three specific values that those variables will take on. So we want to make sure that when we talk about the state of a system, that system will be at equilibrium. It will not, in the process, it will not be in the process of changing. So we'll be in that state and will remain in that state for a fair amount of time. A fair amount of time is greater than zero. And at that time, the pressure doesn't change, the volume doesn't change, the temperature doesn't change. It stays at that state for a specified amount of time. That could be very small time, but it's important that we understand that, that it's not on a pass-through. Because when the state is constantly changing, that means we cannot point a finger to a particular point in time and say, that is the pressure, volume, and temperature at that time, because technically speaking, the delta T would be approaching zero. An equation of state relates one state to another. So we're going to have equations where the gas, for example, a sample of gas will be at a particular state and then will go to a different state. So then we'll have an equation that will then allow us to go from one state to another state and define how the pressure, how the volume, and how the temperature will change depending upon the state that it's in or that it's coming from and going to. So an equation of state relates one state to another and it, of course, uses those particular state variables, and we'll see some examples of that later. Now we also want to consider the wall that contains our sample, the, the wall that contains, for example, the sample of gas that, may, that we may have. Well, the wall could be adiabatic. Whenever you see the term adiabatic, that simply means that no heat can be exchanged. An adiabatic process is a process where no heat is being exchanged. So when we have an adiabatic wall, it does not allow heat, we use the symbol Q for heat, to pass through that wall. A, di a diathermal wall freely allows the exchange of heat. So whenever a state changes and uh, the state of a, a, of a gas changes and the temperature changes, well, one of the reasons why it may have changed is because heat may have either entered or left that sample, that sample of gas, and therefore we will have had an exchange of heat that means we had a diathermal wall, but it does not allow the exchange of matter. A process, now let's, because we use the term often, a process is a change of state. So we had the gas in a particular state with a particular pressure, volume, and temperature, and we'll say that was state one. And then we do something to it, or something happens, or it does something, and we'll get into the detail later. Then we go to a different state, let's call it state two, and the pressure may have changed, the volume may have changed, or the temperature may have changed. As long as one of the three have changed, you're now in a different state. Not all three have to change, although that often happens, but not always, it depends upon how it did change. And again, we'll talk more about that as well. So next, let's talk about a cyclical process. What do we mean by a cyclical process? Well, what a cyclical process is, is that you start at some initial state, let's call it state one, where you have pressure, volume, and temperature, defining that particular state. Then the state changes, maybe it changes again and again and again, and eventually you end up back with the same pressure, the same volume, and the same temperature. Let's call that the final state. So maybe we should call this the initial state and the final state. And if the pressures are now the same, the volumes are the same, and the temperatures are the same between the initial and the final state, means you end up back in the state that you started with. And so if the final state is equal to the initial state, then we have what we call a cyclical process. It, any one of the three variables, or just one of them, may have changed during that cyclical process. But if you end up in the same place, we have what we call a cyclical process. And we encounter that a lot in thermodynamics. And finally, the concept of quasi-static process. Now, that's kind of a strange term because static means nothing is moving, nothing is changing. But quasi-static means that you can make very small changes from one state to the next, a very small infinitesimal change. 
which means that we go from one instant in time to the next instant in time, we have infinitesimal changes that can happen to either the pressure, the volume, or the temperature, two of the three, or all three, and so we can express those very tiny changes in terms of differentials, dp, dv, and dt. So if we follow the change in the process or going from one state to another, but we follow it at very small increments in time, very small instants in time, then we can talk about it as a quasi-static process. So even though the process is changing or the states are changing, I shouldn't say process changing, but the states are changing, Remember, we want to define the system at equilibrium. We can consider it at equilibrium at every particular instant, and then these equations will still work. So if we're allowed to do that, and there's many circumstances where we can, then we still have what we call quasi-static situations where the equations of state still hold true. And that's why we have to have that as well. That's how we know.